Hi everyone and welcome to another video. In this video I want to hopefully try and answer a question that I've seen a few times now in the comments about the diffusers that I used for the nano leaf replica. Specifically asking things like how do uh, I get rid of these dots of light from the LEDs. Now to answer that question it's a bit more complicated than just saying, well, do this in your slicer and that's it. Job done. Great. It's the problem with it is that there are several things that can affect that side of it all. Um, you've got probably the big one really is more to do with the material that you're going with. Um, after that, you've got the thickness of the diffuser. And then after that, you've got how far away the diffuser is from the light source, or in this instance, the LEDs. I've come up with a little bit of an experiment and I'll make sure all of these files are available for people to use. So you can use these yourself if you want to test out your materials. What I've got here is a little jig that's holding a small LED strip. Um, it's actually two parts. There's a backing piece, then there's the LEDs, which are then, uh, and then this top piece clamps down and actually glues on top of it. You probably see the glue on there. Um, I'm running it from my little, I use this just to test out if I'm doing anything with WLED. You could just run it with a standard 60 strip, uh, 60 LED per meter strip of just white LEDs probably would be more than sufficient. I just happen to have these and it's easy enough for me to do it this way. But this is just set up for 60 LEDs per meter. So that's all you'd need to have for this. What I've also done is produced some spacers. So um, we can obviously move the diffuser farther away from the LEDs. And then over to the side here, I've got three bits of, or three types of filament and um, they're all PETG uh, but this one at the top here is transparent. Now obviously I mean anyone who's tried to print transparent on a 3D printer will know that it doesn't end up transparent but the actual filament is transparent so it's going to be the one that offers the least amount of obstruction for the light coming through. Uh, underneath that we've got a translucent white. Now that one Actually, when I bought it, it was meant to be a solid white uh, and it's not. It's a uh, slightly translucent white. Um, now, normally I don't really print that much with it because I don't like the look. It looks very cheap because you get that kind of subsurface scattering. Um, but for this purpose, it could be very good. Uh, and then lastly, I've got this one, which is a solid white. And this one actually is really nice, actually, this one. Um, in terms of where I got them from, uh, this one is actually from uh, Rigid Ink. Uh, they don't produce filament anymore, so but any transparent PLA should uh, PLA, sorry, PETG should be the same. This one is just a cheap uh, white PETG that I got off of Amazon. I've had a look, and they don't exist anymore. The people who sold it, the listing's gone, so I can't really offer anything on that one. This one's from 3D Jake. Uh, and this one, like I say, if you want a nice white one, this actually does really well. It has a very slight blue hue to it when it's actually on the spool, but when it prints off, it is quite a brilliant white. Um, I will hasten to add, just to clarify things here, none of this is sponsored. None of these companies, um, well, one, of, one doesn't exist anymore in terms of producing 3D filament. One you can't buy because they got, the, got rid of the listing and the other one is still valid. So... None of them have sponsored me to do this. I'm too small for anyone to want to sponsor me. Um, so yeah, this is all just filament I happen to have here right now that I bought out of my own money. Um, so what I've done is I've actually run through this already. And the process I've done was I've taken each one of these in turn and basically I put that on top of the LEDs. I then took a photo of it. Um, I done it so that the photo the settings were all the same so exposure frame uh, not frame rate the uh, shutter speed and everything like that was all the same so it's all the the differences in brightness will be what the camera is actually seeing it's not artificially done by the fact that the uh, iso changed or the uh, aperture changed and things like that so it's all everything was kept as close to the same as I can physically make it so basically the idea was is that I popped these on took a photo and then I can go to the next one 
These are all done, so obviously we can see there's four of each. Um, in terms of sizing, you've got uh, the thickness of the diffuser on the front. This is 0 0.2 mil, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Um, and then obviously we've got the different opacities of the filaments themselves. Uh, so I've done that for each of those with no spacer. Then I repeated it again with one spacer and then repeated it again with two spacers. I'm going to make all of these available so everyone can you can run your own experiments if you wish. You can also produce more of these. I've only done two, um, but you could obviously make more and have it quite far up if you really want to do for some reason. Um, so what we'll do now is uh, I'll bring up some images of the photos that I've taken. I've grouped them so you've got uh, all three uh, filaments with all four thicknesses and each image is with no spacer, one spacer and then two spacers. So we can have a quick look at those. Okay, so if we look at the first one here, here we've got uh, the uh, diffusers with no spacers. These are as close as it can with that particular rig get to the LEDs and what you can see here is if we start with the transparent ones at the top then translucent and then opaque. All of them have hot spots. Now one thing I want to make really clear at this point is what the camera sees is not necessarily what the eye sees. It's very very hard to take a photo when you're looking directly at a LED like this because you get a very bright hot spot. Um, so where you look at these and you can see that it's very very white then that is just being effectively overexposed and I need to keep it the same because some of them as we go further into this you'll see they get quite dim. So that's something to bear in mind. Also actually on the other end of the spectrum when we get to the one with the two spaces you'll see that the opaque one at 0.5 millimeters is really dim. Now it's not as dim in real life as the camera makes out but like I said I had to balance getting a good exposure and uh, being able to actually get an idea of what's going on. So take these as a guide they are not necessarily exactly what you will see but when you look at this the on all of the three variants of the filament as you get thicker you can see that generally the uh, hot spot either sort of becomes slightly more diffused um, which is what we're aiming for and the spaces between them become um, again slightly brighter um, for the most part. The exception here is when you go down to the opaque ones uh, as you look as I say if you look across those you can see the actual gap between the hot spots gets dimmer that is not what's happening in real life when you look at it directly with your eye. Um, it doesn't get quite as dim as that. So it becomes effectively what ends up happening to the eye is the hotspots become significantly less and what you end up with is a more smoother look to it. So that's just something to bear in mind with the opaque ones. It's not quite as, 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 it, as it appears here. Um, but what you, as I say, what you can see is the transparent one is the brightest because obviously it's mostly transparent so it lets a lot of light through and then the opaque one is the dimmest for whichever thickness of diffuser that we're actually using here. So being close to the light source as well, all of them do show to a certain degree with the uh, 0.5 mil opaque but all of them do show somewhat of a hotspot so you can still see the individual LEDs. Moving on to them with one spacer, at this point it becomes much more distinct. The transparent ones you've still got just defined LEDs um, and you can still see the individual LEDs and the individual hotspots. The translucent, now again at this point here, probably at 0.4 millimeters, to the eye these hotspots are only just about visible. Um, you can see that they are slightly brighter than the surrounding area and you, because of the way the light kind of reflects and reflects, refracts ah, through the plastics um, because obviously you've got the, the way that the plastics laid down you've got that effectively a crisscross pattern because it goes diagonally in one direction for one layer and then obviously 45 degrees uh, the other way for the next layer. So there's a little bit of diffraction which you can kind of start to see the individual LEDs because of that. However, when you look at the opaque one, this is very accurate as to what the eye sees in terms of the smoothness. So it's very smooth. Um, it's a bit brighter than this is implying. Um, it is still reasonably bright, 
but it is getting dimmer and it is noticeable to the eye that the 0.5 mil one is very much dimmer than the 0.2 mil one. So again, hopefully that's kind of a common sense thing that the thicker the material is separating the front from the back and from the light source, the less light is actually gonna get through. So the more diffuse it will get, but the less light will actually be effectively passed through and emitted from the other side. So you get a nice smooth light. This was incredibly smooth, but for the 0.5 mil, but you are losing a lot of brightness for that. And then lastly, with the two spacers, again, actually at this point, the uh, transparent one at 0.5 mil, you could still definitely see the LEDs. There was no getting around that. I don't think it really matters how thick you had that. It would just, you'd still see the defined points of the LEDs, but they're a lot smoother. The translucent one, again, by the 0.4 mil, 0.3 really at this point was becoming quite smooth, despite what this is actually showing on here. And then the uh, 0.4, 0.5 again was very smooth, but again, becoming much dimmer. And again, the opaque, exactly the same, very smooth, just a bar of light effectively, um, but becoming much, much dimmer by the time you reach the 0 0.5 millimeters. So the answer to the question of what print settings should I use is unfortunately a very unhelpful, it depends. It depends on the filament that you're gonna be using, how translucent or transparent it is. It depends on the thickness of the actual diffuser or the diffusing part anyway, and also how far away it is from the LEDs. Now with the WLED, uh, nano leaf replica that I made the distance is fixed because obviously it was a pre made design so it was always going to be I think approximately 25 maybe 30 millimeters or so from that so that's always going to be fixed so the only real things that we can adjust would be the thickness of the diffuser uh, if you wanted to adjust the model slightly and lastly probably the easiest one would be what filament you're actually using so it does unfortunately depend on what you are using um, and which filament you're going to be using. So what I would say is, like I say, I'll get these up on Thingiverse or Prusa Printer or probably both. And what you can then do is obviously print these off, experiment yourself. These, by the way, the, I'll use this one because it's probably a bit more visible. All of these have notches to represent how thick the, um, diffusing part is. So you've got effectively two bars for 0.2, three for 0.3 and so on. So you've got a visual idea as to what the thickness is without it having to try and remember and just go, oh, that one's a bit darker. Is that that one? So you can actually see on the side. Um, like I say, these ones here, the spaces, you can print off as many as you want and go as high as you want. I think roughly you'd, you'd probably need three or four in order to simulate the depth for the nano leaf replica, the light pods. So yeah, print off as many as you need to get the distance that you want. Um, so hopefully that will help. Um, obviously, please feel free to ask more questions in the comments. If anything else needs to be clarified, I will try my best to answer. Um, and I say this is, I'm just a hobbyist. It's just me experimenting more than anything else. I'm not an expert on any of this. But like everyone, I'm happy to learn. And if anyone's got any other advice on this, please, again, let me know. And we can maybe look in the future at updating this and coming up with other ideas that may work. Other than that, I will, again, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.